So today we are going to look at Monte Carlo tree search or famously known as MCTS. This is a planning algorithm used in AlphaGo. So let's get started. So in the last lecture, we saw that what is reinforcement learning, what is uh, planning, what is Markov decision process, and what is the difference between RL and planning. We also saw what is exploration and exploitation trade-off and we saw a famous algorithm known as upper confidence pound that allows us to dynamically and automatically uh, switch between exploration and exploitation. Today in our lecture we are going to look at Monte Carlo tree search. This is a lecture or one of the prereqs required for one of the papers I am going to discuss in uh, next video. Okay. So what does the title mean? What does Monte Carlo and what does tree search mean? So as you can see, search implies that we are going to search forward or backward in some way through the state space of a Markov decision process. A tree because we are going to create a tree of the various states that we are going to visit during our search. And Monte Carlo is a set of uh, general term used for a set of methods called with Monte Carlo sampling based methods in which you sample your experience and then aggregate the experience in one form of the another. In the last lecture, we saw that you do something called Q value of an action, which essentially says that what is the expected reward if I take a particular action, right? And for that, we can use sampling or uh, we can simply execute a particular policy to see a uh, experience, to see an episode and then collect and aggregate the experience, okay? So Monte Carlo research is used in the cases where the state space is too large and further in general the in case of reinforcement learning and planning as well the action space is also too large right. So this is called uh, branching factor for example in the case that we saw in the last uh, lecture we had a grid with us where the robot was up at up, uh, lower right corner and the goal was at upper left corner right. In this case, this, uh, we have we calculated that there are total nine states and we had total four actions up, down, left, right. So now in this case, it is very easy to exhaustively search through various paths possible. For example, you can go up first, then go left and or you can go up again. So all these exhaustive search based algorithms you can do. But what would happen, let's say, if, if our uh, grid was, let's say, 100 cross 100. Right? then you cannot do an exhaustive search. So in this case, what would you do? You would do some form of informed search. And this Monte Carlo tree search is one such form. Right. So how underlying fundamental question that it wants to answer is that how do we decide which action to take next? Should I go left? Should I go right? Should I go up or down? Or should I continue to stay in a particular state for a longer period of time? Right. So how does it execute? How does it work? So let's say you are at a particular state S0, that is the initial state. You are supposed to decide which action to take next and based on that action you will be led to let's say next state S2 and you will next again have to decide another action and you will have to uh, that will lead you to state S3 and so on and so forth till the end of the episode and the end of the episode in the last lecture we defined uh, by the uh, or represented by the symbol tau. So in this case what you can do is what humans also do. When you are in a particular state and you are not sure what to do next, what do you do? You visualize and simulate the particular scenario uh, in your head by taking various actions in the in, in your mind, right? For example, if you are standing uh, on a road which bifurcates into two parts, uh, one goes left, one goes right, and you have to reach a particular goal state, uh, then what would you do? You will first simulate if I go right, then what would happen if I go left, what will happen? And based on that, you will select which one to uh, which path to take right similarly can we apply the same thing here is the question right so that's what these these triangles are showing here that you are going to do at each state you are going to do a forward search based on some form of criteria what is that criteria uh, we will look into it now okay so mcts has four steps in its process right and these four steps I'm going to discuss one by one uh, uh, in a sequence. Okay. So first step is that let's say you have already developed a tree of states that you have visited. What does this tree contain? The tree contains two types of nodes. One is the states node, state nodes which are represented as circles without filling. Another one is the action nodes which are represented by dark circles here which are filled with a black color here. And third we have 
a particular set of edges between states and actions for example if you can if you can take in this state right if you if in this state if you can take three actions these will be represented by three uh, uh, like child nodes and there will be arrows from the state to the action right and then you will also have edges from a particular action to a particular state if up taking that particular action leads to a particular state right okay now some of the edges are marked with a blue color also these are the edges now we are going to discuss next okay so let's say at a particular time step you have already covered a particular part of the tree which represents what form of states what states you have visited so far okay so let's say this is that particular tree in this case the first phase of uh, mcts cycle is selection now what you will do is that you will now select based on certain criteria which particular node to expand next right for example in this case the path you took to decide which node to expand next led you to this particular node right and uh, and this particular action once you have selected which node to expand uh, you will do the second step which is the expansion step in the expansion step what you will do is that you will execute that particular action and that will lead you to a new state and you will add the corresponding possible actions to the tree okay so this is the expansion once you have expanded you have not ended your episode here right what you will do is that you will execute a rollout policy to simulate the behavior of the environment from these particular actions okay so let's take an example in this case uh, let's say you have a grid world with you here the robot is here and the goal is in at the upper left corner and you have four actions up down left and right now at initial state which is represented by this what you can do is that how do you do forward search you will create a node for this particular uh, state right and then you will add all the actions which are up down left and right okay now in the selection stage what you will do is you will decide that which of these actions i want to expand let's say you want to expand the left action okay so you, what you will do is that you will select this particular left action so the blue arrow will go in this case in the expansion in the expansion step this was selection step in the expansion step you will expand this so you will have up you will have down let me change the color here again you will have up you will have down you will have your left and you will have your right and then you have chosen to expand left and when you take left you will end up in only one state because it was a deterministic environment that means you will end up in this particular cell okay so let's say it is represented by s1 state or or rather s not one state for the sake of nomenclature okay so now that you have reached this particular state you have expanded its state but the end of episode has not reached so what you are doing all of this is not actually being executed in the real world all of these is actually being simulated in the head of the robot or the agent that you are training right now so robot has decided that let me in its head that let me try the left action and see what happens okay and in its head itself it has figured out that it will reach the this particular cell and that is being represented by s01 okay now once we have that let's say the episode has not ended now so what will you do you will execute or continue the policy from there that you have learned so far for example we in the last lecture we saw that we can follow a grid epsilon greedy or a greedy policy let's say it follows a greedy policy and it ends up uh, in a particular state after let's say 10 steps or something which was the number of steps you you would want to take that was allowed or the horizon of the problem was now in this case this third step was the execution phase okay so you had this particular uh, graph with you in the case of expansion 
we have simulation okay so now from this particular cell in its head it will continue it will use a particular policy to see how it will behaves if it had taken the left action and following that it would have uh, followed a particular policy right so it will roll out it will roll out and let's say it reaches the end of the episode from there you will get a reward either plus 1 or minus 1 let's say it did not reach the goal state right it did not reach the goal state it ended up somewhere here so it got a reward of minus 1 okay it got a reward of minus 1 in the case of minus 1 what will happen is that now the fifth step uh, sorry the fourth step will start which is the backup step okay in the backup step what would happen is that whatever graph you have created so far you will pass on this value of minus 1 that you have gotten through this path then at s not 1 then at the left action and then to the root node that means the q value of all the actions you have taken in this path will be updated but these up until this point nothing will be stored but following this particular node and upward all of the q values that have, that you had in your tree will be updated that means that the q value of left action given state s not will now be updated minus 1 uh, the old value and the minus it will be a function of old value and the minus 1 right so this particular four step process now completes the one iteration of mcts now after this you have this particular tree with you okay now using this particular tree what you will do is that you will expand it you will follow these four steps again okay so now this particular tree you will remove the rollouts that you have done but you will keep the tree now in the next state again you will decide what is the uh, sorry what should be the selection and what not do, would you want to expand further so let's say in this case you decide that you want to expand the up action so again you will follow through this you will add another node here in the case of expansion you have up down left uh, right and you had s not 1 let's say in this case you have s not 2 which what would that be from for from this particular state this particular cell the robot took an up action so it reached here and you continue this doing this process for a fixed number of uh, these cycles these four step cycles once you have finished these cycles you will have a particular tree with you then add the tree all these initial actions will have a q value or all the actions in the tree will have a q value and you take the best action among these and that becomes your action that is going to be actually executed for example let's say you decided that in this particular grid the left action gives you the best result right then you will actually execute that particular action the left action and you will move to the new state and where what would that new state would be that you your robot has moved from this particular state this particular cell to a new cell let's say this okay because you decided to take the left action so now once you are at this this particular state you will again execute the mcts that means you will simulate the behavior you will plan the behavior in your head right uh, this is being depicted here in the this is being depicted here in the uh, this particular part okay so you are at initial state you do a forward search using monte carlo tree search then you decide which action to take you take that action actually in the environment and then you move to s2 and you execute the same search again and again right what would happen is that in this case we can do certain optimizations that once you decided that you will actually go to the left you will take the left action and move to the uh, this particular cell now if you notice that this particular cells tree there whatever you are going to create will be a subtree of the original graph that you have created right it may or may not be if the number of uh, actions are too too large right but what if it is the case then you can reuse this particular subgraph again in the next step 
and so on and so forth right so that's the algorithm i have written that create a tree using mcts you follow this four steps for a state selection expansion simulation and backup once you have done this for a particular number of cycles pick the best action for mcts look ahead right then you execute the action 80 in reality and then you can reuse the part of tree for st that was uh, created in the previous step right so this was the monte carlo tree search algorithm that has been used i'm going to use this uh, background in the next video i'm going to upload tomorrow based on how to use this for training uh, large language model to generate code thank you